I confess I've been trying so hard to keep it all out, keep it all out. So love, I pray that you break my heart so wide open that the whole world falls. I give up trying so hard to keep it all out, keep it all out. So love, fill me, breathe me to peace. So wide open that the whole world falls in. If I made for love, make me strong enough. And when. Till I feel safe, the love fill me, breathe me to pieces. wide open doves fly out and doves come home here to rest in my heart is wide open heart is wide open my heart is wide open heart is wide open.
Happy Sunday. I am Laura Gustafson, the Congregational Administrator, and these are the announcements. Journey to Membership starts today, and the second day is March 6th, so if you're joining in on that today, please do not forget. The Board is hosting converse, Congregational Conversations March 7th after service. Again, that's Congregational Conversations March 7th after service. Our directory is starting to be updated. We've gotten several emails from people. If you think your directory listing needs to be updated, please email office1 at vuu.org. Again, that's office1 at vuu.org. If you're looking for any other additional information for this week, please go to vuu.org and click on the weekly happenings link. Have a wonderful day. Good morning. I am Rebecca Riggs, one of the worship associates here at Valley UU, and I will be our service leader this morning. Although obviously we are still not all together physically, it's still wonderful to join all together for this brief time, keeping strong the spirit of this amazing congregation. Thank you all for being here. I first heard the words of our invitation to worship from our interim minister, the Reverend Fred Wooden, when he shared them with us last October. They resonated with me. The words are from biblical scholar Walter Brueggemann. He said that in these times, quote, the prophetic tasks of the church are to speak truth in a society that lives in illusion to grieve in a society that practices denial and express hope in a society that lives in despair. And I would add, our faith is to help us heal in a society that often throws out that which is broken. Let us join together, allowing ourselves to grieve, to hope, to explore the difficult task of healing that which is broken. The musical invitation to worship is called, Do Not Leave Your Cares at the Door. All that you are, all that you hope to be, those of you who feel broken or whole, we invite all of you to come into this time of worship. Do not leave your cares at the door. Do not leave them there when you come into this place. Be open to forgiveness and transformation. Come on in, you are welcome here. And do not leave your cares at the door. Oh, bring your pain and sorrow and joy. There's a place for them upon the altar of life. Be open to forgiveness and transformation. Come on in, you are welcome here. And do not leave your cares at the door. This is a place of grace. Of losing and finding our way upon the winding road. Meeting and parting, stumbling and starting over. Do not 
not leave your cares at the door. Do not leave them there when you come into this place. Be open to forgiveness and transformation. Come on in, you are welcome Come on in, come in. And do not leave your cares at the door. Amen. Amen. Well, now is the time where if you have a chalice at home, you can light it with me. And please join with me as we say together the words by which we light our chalice. We kindle this flame, symbol of our faith, for the light of truth, the warmth of community, and the fire of love, which calls us to work for justice. Marcy, you're muted. I think our um, audio is not working right for Marcy, but she is introducing the Time for All Ages, which is a story from our tapestry of faith called Loves Connects Us, a program on living in Unitarian Universalist Covenant. It is for grades four to five. And again, it's called the Mishmash Heart. I think Marcy made it the recording. The Mishmash Heart, a story from the UU curriculum, Love Connects Us. Recently, at a multi-generational event at a Unitarian Universalist congregation, everyone was encouraged to create a heart. They were given all kinds of craft supplies, paper and glue, markers, pipe cleaners, flowers, even little gems and ribbons, everything they needed to, to design a heart. Emily worked diligently to create the most perfect and beautiful heart that she could. It even had diamond-like gems all around it. Here it is. So as she was helping to clean up, Emily noticed a heart that was made by a woman who was, you know, about her grandmother's age. It was a mishmash mess of odd colors. It had pieces that were ripped and torn and then glued kind of haphazardly on it. It had wrinkles and crinkles, and there was even a hole in it. Here's that heart. It's just got all kinds of stuff, doesn't it? Yeah. Of course, Emily thought something was wrong, so she offered to help the woman fix the heart. But the woman just smiled at her and explained, well, there was nothing wrong with her heart. It revealed all the things that had happened in her life. She said the beautiful colors and the, some of the designs represented the happy times, like when she first met her husband. And there's even wedding rings on here for when they got married. And then the birth of their kids and the things that they did, like um, learning how to read or or riding a bike, even graduating from college. I think, oh, look, there's that for graduating from college. But, Emily said, what about all the rips and the tears and the wrinkles? Why are they there? Well, those were for the sad times in her life, the woman explained. The time that her best friend was stricken with measles and the time that, you know, someone lied to her or did something that hurt her feelings. And the hole, did you see the hole? That was when her husband died. In fact, every time a person comes into my life that I care about, they take a piece of my heart with them. 
Well, this was distressing to Emily, thinking of this woman having to give away parts of her heart to other people. But what happens once you've given it all away, she asks. You'll be left with nothing. Oh, no, I won't, the woman responded, because you see, they give me pieces of their hearts as well. Oh, you can even see this little added on piece that says friend. Uh, here, here's another one over here. Someone said thanks. Emily looked down at her beautiful, perfect heart with the gems and the designs that she made and she worked so hard on. She looked again at the woman's mishmash heart with its jagged colors and rips and wrinkles. And without hesitation, Emily just ripped a piece of her heart right off. And she handed it to the woman. And the woman found a place for it on her mismatch heart. Hmm. And then she ripped off a piece of her heart and gave that to Emily so she could put it on her heart. Let's see if we can fit this one. Oh, we can add it to the mishmash heart right there. It has some little gems, the pink color. And together, they share pieces of their heart. Our opening song is about that mishmash of our lives. Because they're always happiness and sadness, beauty and the not so pretty. But in the end, we are how we share ourselves with others and how we let our light shine through. So please join in the Thunder Ridge High School's virtual choir as they sing this little light of mine and join in. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Welcome friends to Valley Unitarian Universalist Congregation, a welcoming community where we strive to accept each other wherever we came from and support each other wherever we are going. I'm Melanie Clunan-Schulte, today's worship associate, 
and I'm glad to see so many familiar faces of our beloved community. If you are not a familiar face, but are instead new to us, checking us out for the first or second time, I want to extend a special welcome and invite you to stay on after the service concludes to meet some of our members and learn more about us. Well, this is the time of year it feels lucky to live where we do. While much of the country is still experiencing frigid temperatures, sleet and snow, we are starting to see our desert bloom. The flowers behind me are from the trees just outside my office. I wish we had John Waters smell-o-vision for you right now because they are so fragrant. These flowers are sacred to me because they bloom every year at the same time and remind me of a special friend. I met my friend Colleen on the first day of college. I was still 17 and looked about 14. Colleen had the self-assuredness of someone in her 20s and struck me as very cosmopolitan. Although I later learned she was from a farm in Nebraska, so looks can be deceiving. Over the years, we became close friends the kind of people who would throw a Hawaiian luau in the middle of winter in Nebraska or put on formal attire to go out dancing while our compatriots were at frat parties. We had a lot of fun together, but mostly we had great conversations. The kind that last for hours. The kind that define that time of life between youth and adulthood. We stayed in touch when she went off to graduate school and I, I stayed put for medical school. And even after I moved to Arizona for residency. But on a random Tuesday in December, I got a call that my friend was in intensive care in a burn unit in Nebraska after a suicide attempt. Visitors weren't being allowed, but her husband said he would read letters to her. So I wrote every day. Knowing how hospitals are, I sent a collage of pictures to hang in her ICU room so that the staff would know she was more than her admitting diagnosis. Someone who had beauty, style, and a great sense of humor. After a few weeks, she had recovered enough to be transferred to a care facility, and her husband called to say he was recruiting friends and family to help him when she returned home, as she would need rides to extensive therapy and medical visits. I planned to take a week off work to stay with them, but a few days later, he called again. Colleen had attempted suicide again, and this time, she had not survived. I returned home from the funeral and went back to work the last day of February, feeling as low as I had ever felt. I'd experienced grief before, the death of my grandparents, my husband's cancer diagnosis, but I had never felt so bereft of hope. Walking to my car after a long work day, feeling despondent, I became aware of a scent that was so pleasant, I stopped in my tracks to look around and see where it might be coming from. That's when I spotted purple flowers, these purple flowers on the trees above me. I suddenly understood the Wordsworth poem, <clears throat> surprised by joy. A few months later, I started coming to VUU, which was one part of my healing process. Every year at this time, the flowers bloom for a brief time. They are lovely, but to me, they are more than that. They are a visit from my friend. They remind me of the beauty that was her life, not just the tragic circumstances that were her death. They remind me that even in the midst of the deepest sorrow, one can be surprised by simple joy. Rebecca's service today will also be such a reminder. I am so glad you're sharing it with us. And now we come to the time in the service when we who have enough of anything, be it love, expertise, 
or financial resources are reminded of the need to share with those who may not. Your support funds the mission of this congregation, making sure others can also come here to heal. You can text or mail your donation. And if you have not yet pledged, please do so that the work of this community may continue. Thank you for your generosity. We pause now to go into our meditation or centering time. And I invite you to breathe deeply and relax as best as you can for just a few moments. I wanna share with you the words from the meditation music that you will be hearing. Let the words and the music serve to center you, knowing that healing is possible. I ask you to listen to these words now as I read them as poetry and prayer, to focus on them, to see if they find a place of meaning for you. And then when you hear the music itself, let it just wash over you and bring you some peace. Oh, gather up the brokenness and bring it to me now. The fragrance of those promises you never dared to vow. The splinters that you carry, the cross you left behind, come healing of the body, come healing of the mind. Behold the gates of mercy in arbitrary space. And none of us deserving the cruelty or the grace. O solitude of longing where love has been confined, come healing of the body, come healing of the mind. O see the darkness yielding that tore the light apart, come healing of the reason come healing of the heart. The words resonate. None of us deserving the cruelty or the grace. Come healing of the body, come healing of the mind, come healing of the heart. The song is Come Healing by Leonard Cohen and sung by members of our choir, Jim Nielsen, Hillary Culley, and Kelly Walker. We'll gather up the brokenness, bring it to me now. The fragrance of those promises you never dared to vow. The splinters that you carried, the cross you left behind. Come healing of the body, come healing of the mind. Let the heavens hear it, the penitential hymn, come healing of the spirit, come healing of the limb. Behold the gates of mercy in arbitrary space. And none of us deserving the cruelty or the grace. O oh, solitude of longing, where love has been confined, come healing of the body, come healing of the mind. O oh, see the darkness yielding, that tore the light apart come healing of the reason come healing of the heart O oh, trouble dust concealing an undivided love 
The heart beneath is teaching to the broken heart above. Oh, let the heavens falter, let the earth proclaim, Come healing of the altar, come healing of the name. branches to lift the little pod, O longing of the arteries to purify the blood, and let the heavens hear it, the penitential hymn, come healing of the spirit, come healing of a limb. Oh, let the heavens hear it, the penitential hymn, come healing of the Spirit, come healing of the limb. The reading this morning is by Meredith Garman and is called Blessed Affliction. This is a story of a young man who lost his leg. His leg had to be removed at the hip to save him from bone cancer. Rachel Remen is an MD and now a clinical professor at family and community medicine at the University of California, San Francisco School of Medicine. She is a pioneer in the mind-body holistic health movement and sees the practice of medicine as a spiritual path. This young man was one of Dr. Remen's patients. She writes, he was 24 years old when I started working with him and he was a very angry man with lots of bitterness. He felt a deep sense of injustice and a very deep hatred for all well people because it seemed so unfair to him that he had suffered this terrible loss so early in life. Over the course of more than two years, slowly a profound shift began. He came to look beyond himself to reach out to others who had suffered severe physical losses and to make visits to them. Once he visited a young woman who was almost his own age. It was a hot day in California and he was in running shorts and his artificial leg showed as he entered the hospital room. The young woman had lost both her breasts to cancer and she was so depressed, she would not even look at him. The nurses had left a radio playing. So to get her attention, he unstrapped his leg and began dancing around the room on one leg, snapping his fingers to the music. She looked at him in amazement and then burst out laughing and said, man, if you can dance, I can sing. A year later, Remen says, quote, we sat down to review our work together. He talked about what was significant to him and then I shared what was significant to me in our process. As we were reviewing our two years of work together, I opened his file and discovered there several drawings that he'd made early on. I handed them to him. He looked at them and said, oh, look at this one. He showed me one of his earliest drawings. I had suggested that he draw a picture of his body. He had drawn a picture of a vase and running through that vase was a deep black crack. This was the image of his body and he had taken a black crayon and had drawn the crack over and over and over again. 
He was grinding his teeth with rage at the time. It was very, very painful because it seemed to him that this vase could never function as a vase again. It could never hold water. Now, several years later, he came to this picture and looked at it and said, oh, this one isn't finished. And I said, extending a box of crayons, well, why don't you finish it? He picked up a yellow crayon and putting his finger on the crack, he said, you see here where it's broken? This is where the light comes through. And with the yellow crayon, he drew light streaming through the crack in his box. That man's one-leggedness became the way that he was able to shine in the world. Our special music this morning is called Go Light Your World, written by Chris Rice and performed by Katie and Andrew Seifert. We all have healing to do to keep our light burning. We all still have ways that we can bring our light to the world. There is a candle in every soul, some brightly burning and some dark and cold. And there is a spirit who brings a fire, ignites a candle, and makes his home. Carry your candle, run to the darkness, seek out the helpless, confused and torn. Hold out your candle for all to see and take your candle, go light your words, take your candle, go light your words. Frustrated brother. See how he's tried to light his own candle some other way. See now your sister, she's been robbed and lied to, still holds a candle without a flame. Carry your candle. Run to the darkness, seek out the loveless, the tired and worn. Hold out your candle for all to see and take your candle go light your world. Take your candle. Go out your world. Hey na 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 na. Hey now. Hey na 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 na. Hey now. Hey na 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 na. Hey now. We are a family whose hearts are blazing. So let's raise our candles and light up the sky. Praying to our Father in the name of love, make us a beacon in darkest times. We carry your candle, run to the darkness, seek out the helpless, Take your 
I want to start out this morning acknowledging the extreme care that must be taken when trying to talk about the possibility of strength that can be found after our times of suffering and feeling broken. Too often, the relationship between our suffering and our strength is used to support the vision of a supreme being who allows us to suffer for our own good. I totally, totally reject religious and secular platitudes that seem to imply that you should somehow welcome your suffering. Statements like, God doesn't give you more than you can handle, or what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. Such words were said to me by well-meaning people in the days, weeks, and months after my son's death. And they only brought to the surface more pain, frustration, and anger. Suffering is no gift, and we are not called to be cheery about our pain. Sometimes what doesn't kill you almost kills you, and your survival is a miracle gained by human resilience and a whole lot of help. Sometimes you grow immensely from an experience. And if you were offered that experience again, you would respond with an emphatic, no, no way. Our growth does not justify our suffering or explain it away. Rather, I believe like the Buddhist, suffering is simply a fact of our existence in this paradoxical life of beauty and tragedy. Brokenness is what happens when we open our hearts to the world and we fight against it valiantly because we are human. And sometimes, we accept it. And miraculously, sometimes we grow. It is the growth and resilience we admire, not the pain. So it is yet another paradox of life that though we would not wish brokenness on anyone, we can still celebrate the incredible beauty and strength made manifest in every broken place. Which is why I like the way this morning's story, The Mishmash Heart, tells us that our hearts are, are beautiful, even as they are crumpled up and torn by living and loving. I even can appreciate the image of tearing off a piece of your heart to share with others. But if I am honest, 
my heartbreak rarely feels like a gentle tear. Instead, my world has been shaken. My world has fallen and it feels something like crashing. What was once whole suddenly is not. Have you felt that? God, in that moment, how we desperately wish we could go back to the way we were before. How we long to be whole again, uninjured, unblemished, unmarked. It was C.S. Lewis who wrote that the effort to make our way through life with hearts uninjured and unblemished and unmarked all too often leads to hearts that are simply unbreakable. He writes, quote, to love at all is to be vulnerable. Love anything and your heart will be wrung out and possibly broken. If you want to make sure of keeping it intact, you must give it to no one, not even an animal. Wrap it carefully round with hobbies and little luxuries. Avoid all entanglements. Lock it up safe in the casket of your selfishness. But in that casket, safe, dark, motionless, airless, it will change. It will not be broken. It will become unbreakable. And so it is that we move through the world, loving people and animals and places, loving the world even as its tragedy chips away at our hearts. So it is that our hearts are broken again and again to be stitched back together as best we can. And just as the stitching together of broken flesh is painful and itchy and the healing often slower than we would like, so too is the healing of the heart. And our hearts don't go back to, they were, to the way they were before. At least mine has felt more like this, jagged, cracked, sharp edges, not as durable. When I tried to glue the pieces back together, I found that I could get one side to look pretty good, almost back to normal, but the other side, the one that I was tempted to keep hidden. It was still fragile and full of gaping holes. Definitely not what anyone would now call beautiful. But maybe, just maybe, we sometimes fail to notice our own strength and beauty as it grows through the bitter and sweet events of our lives. If we could see our own hearts in the same way we recognize the resilience and courage of those around us, we might see our scarred hearts a little more like this. In the Japanese culture, there's an art form called kintsuji, which literally translates as golden joinery. In the traditional Japanese tea ceremony, eventually precious china tea bowls would be broken and would have to be discarded. As the story goes, sometime in the 15th century, a famously beautiful bowl was broken and its owner found it to be so precious that he could not bring himself to discard it in the trash. 
Instead, he commissioned an artisan to make it more beautiful and its repair. In doing so, the artisan placed the usual thick, replaced the usual paste and staples with a fine lacquer tinted with powdered gold. These pieces look a hundred times more delicate and beautiful than my, my version. The fragile beauty of these pieces, broken and made more precious in their repair, became so compelling that a whole art form grew and grew. A review of a Kintsugi exhibit at the Smithsonian said, quote, because the repairs are done with such immaculate craft and in precious metal, it's hard to read them as a record of violence and damage. So a crack repaired with gold becomes a record of compassion rather than one of violence and damage. The addition of precious metal to an object that might otherwise be thrown away as damaged or defective is a testament to the object's inherent value. So what if our deepest wish amid the inevitability of heartbreak were not to return to perfect wholeness? but to recognize in ourselves a possible repair, shot through possibly with gold. What if our task is to integrate our heartbreak, any heartbreak, they're sure to find us as we go through a full-bodied and open-hearted life to wear our cracks as openly as we would wear gold, understanding the beauty that comes from complexity, understanding the incredible value of our humanness, which is breakable, but resilient and real. The symbol of Kintsugi is clear. No matter what your heartbreak may be, it is worthy of repair in gold. Every broken piece too precious to be discarded. Furthermore, I believe with every helping hand, every act of compassion you receive, every act of strength that comes from within and without, they are each another drop of gold, which may with time transform a painful, violent crack in your heart into precious evidence of compassion, dignity, and love. I found these words by Stephanie Kalos, and they resonated with me. Quote, we speak of senseless tragedies, but really, is there any other kind? Mothers, wives disappear without a trace, children are killed, madmen and disease ravage the world, leaving wounds immeasurably deep and endlessly mourned. But we never stop looking, not even after those we love become part of the unreachable horizon. We can never stop carrying the weight of love on this pilgrimage. We can only transfigure what we carry. We can only take the shattered pieces and send them whirling into the world so they can take shape in some new way. We can never stop carrying the weight of love on this pilgrimage. We can only transfigure what we carry. That is the task of the religious life. Not to imagine some faraway paradise that only the perfect can enter, nor to give up on possibilities and sit passively in misery among the broken shards of our life. 
Rather, we are called to transform the painful and harsh realities of our lives into as much beauty as we can. We are called to create golden mosaics known as community, as family, as congregations. And we are invited to bring our broken selves into relationship and find ways to help heal each other. There are none among us whose heart has not been broken. Yet here we are, holding together, though cracked, repaired with the golden gifts of the human soul, resilience and courage and love beyond belief. Blessed be, may it be so. Our closing song you will hear was written by UU musician Peter Mayer, and it's called Japanese Bowl, honoring the healing of our cracks through love. some cracks in me they have been filled with gold that's what they used back then when they had a bowl to mend it did not hide the cracks it made them shine So now every old scar shows from every time I broke and anyone's eyes can see I'm not what I used to be but in a collector's mind all of these jagged lines make me more beautiful and worth a much higher price I'm like one of those Japanese was made long ago I have some cracks you can see see how they shine of Our closing words are by L.R. Nost. 
Do not be dismayed by the brokenness of the world. All things break and all things can be mended, not with time as they say, but with intention. So go, love intentionally, extravagantly, unconditionally. The broken people of the world wait for the light that is you. And now Melanie will help us extinguish our talent. Join me in the words by which we extinguish our chalice. Though we extinguish the chalice, our connection to each other and this community remains. May its light guide us this week as we walk the path of justice, speak words of love, and fill our world with compassion until we meet again. I'd like to once again invite you to stay for the breakout rooms and if you're new just stay in the main session and once again the topic for today will be how have you healed after brokenness <laughs>